Well, we cracked below some key areas of support. Is the selling going to continue? Well, we're going to be talking about that in today's stock market brief. If you're new here, welcome to the show. This is the Daily Stock Market Brief Show. I do it Monday through Friday, five days a week. We use technical analysis and intermarket analysis to get a good idea as to where the market might be headed next. Um, the time is already now 5.27 p.m., so I'm getting this out a little bit later than usual. So I just want to let you know I'm going to be running through these charts. It's going to be a little bit more shorter and condensed and this time I actually mean it. Before we hop into today's show, I wanna thank the now 300 patrons that are supporting my channel and my work. And yes, thank you to all the subscribers and the ones that engage in my content as well. Uh, content as well. I wanted to show you, just uh, get an idea of what you know $9 a month might get you. Now this isn't, you know, doesn't mean this is gonna be happening all the time, but as of recently, it's been going pretty good. We did just start this, but here is one uh, stock that I mentioned just yesterday, SUM, had an almost a 6% move today, which is just unbelievable move. I actually forgot to enter into this specific one, but I did enter, you can see here, um, you know, you get alerted when I enter into trades, when I update stops and all that good stuff. Uh, but some of the trades that I'm in right now, one's down um, and then the other four are up as of right now, the ones that I'm actively in. So doing pretty decently as the market has been seeing some pressure. Now, these results aren't always gonna be typical. So just note that, but um, you know, I do uh, work very hard to find quality setups. With all that said, I just wanna say thank you again, give you a little bit more idea as to what it is that I do on Patreon. Um, your support means the world to me as I'm trying to transition out of this, um, being in the career field, nine to five job for the last 11 years at as an account manager. Uh, for a huge telecommunication industry um, and coming into doing this full time. So thank you all for your support. Let's hop into today's episode. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is gonna be quick and to the point. Today was a scary day. You can see here on the left-hand side, most of the markets were down other than the Dow, which the Dow had some pretty nutty price action overall. Still feels like a very big period of distribution. We'll be getting into all of that. Here on the right-hand side, you can see the 11 sectors that make up the S&P 500. We have materials, financials, and industrials leading the way. This to me still, it makes a lot of sense. We're seeing industrials, financials, materials, even energy was in the green as well. Look, at we, we were talking about this in previously, actually, we've been talking about this pretty much all the market recaps, but if you bring up the relative rotation graph that I've been showing you, we've been tracking this from a weekly perspective that XLB was leading the way, coming into that leading corner, and XLI too. We're starting to see a slight curve in XLI, but they're both leading. Now, something to pay attention to uh, and watch closely is these little these little sneak attacks over here, the XLP and XLU, they are improving and as if they continue to improve, just know that these typically do better during times where we see the market draw down. Okay, so investors typically run to XLP and XLU for more of a risk off play because they are necessities, like for example, you know, water, electricity, et cetera, for utilities. Um, so I am keeping a very close eye on here, but I've been focusing heavily on um, certain individual names around materials and industrials. Um, so yeah, and they, they're still kind of just pushing that way. So it's still some good strength there as of now, including today, as you can see, they kind of led the way there. Um, we'll continue to monitor that to see if anything changes. The dollar had a pretty strong day as well. This is fitting the seasonality perspective that we see happen in the month of May with the dollar. You typically see a strong dollar. Now it's still swimming up a river here. And I do know that typically they work inverse with one another. You can see as the dollar broke down here, the, the S&P 500 broke out to the upside. And you can see we cracked down today on the S&P 500 as the market, uh, as the dollar pushed higher. So is there more strength here? Is this kind of flagging out? Um, potentially just building up the base here to head higher. Hey, it's a strong possibility, but it is swimming up, you know, up a river right here with the 200-day moving average sloping down. Um, still hasn't recaptured the 20-day or the 50-day either. From a daily perspective on the S&P 500, you can just see this massive chop back and forth. The momentum we've been talking about has been slowing down from a relative RSI standpoint, and then also the price percent oscillator standpoint. We had a pretty big nasty gap down today. It was a nasty red candle as it pulled into this previous area of support right at around, um, what was the low? The low was uh, 41.28. You can see that the uh, bull stepped right back in, recapturing the 20 day moving average. So is this just a little fake out move to potentially head higher? It's possible we're still within this little channel, this little box right here. So I'm gonna continue to see if we break out to the upside, 
um, then we might see more highs come. If we break down through this, I think that we can easily go tag um, the 50 day moving average, which is right around, um, let's see here, 4,000 to 4,050 would act as like a support zone right in there. So let's see if that is the case. When I look at the VIX, we've been talking about the volatility or the Bollinger Bands contracting tightly. So we just, it seems when you get to these low levels, these very tight contracted areas, you get some bursts in volatility. And today we got that, went all the way up to 22, but it quickly got um, rejected as the market continued to press higher. And you could see it close back beneath 20, which is still that area of resistance. Now resistance is more of a zone. Uh, 22 does act as a previous area of resistance right here and also support. So um, this kind of zone in here, if we start cracking above that even further, yeah, then there might be some more selling pressure to ensue. This could be the very start of a potential uh, Bollinger Band squeeze where we go higher. So we'll see what happens here. Remember this little hammer candle right here as a tight as the Bollinger Bands contracted, we were contracted over here too as well. And you could see this hammer candle, um, this green one right here. And then we had a sideways day, but then we had this really big burst in volatility. So it's still a very possible thing. Uh, just, just be mindful of that, pay close attention to it. From a breadth perspective, uh, not much breadth, okay, big down day. I mean, for the most part, it was a, it was the biggest we've seen in a week, <laughs> you know, two weeks, three weeks. Heck, we, we're used to seeing no down days, really. Uh, but the breadth was pretty weak, down uh, minus 0.514. And I just wanted to call, it's, it's you know, you're building in lower highs here, higher, higher lows here. It's kind of just this tightly, this breadth is like tightly contracting, where I feel like we're going to get some sort of big burst here eventually. Um, and just keep in mind, I have minus 80 and then above 60 right here as you know an overextended area to positive breadth and then down here would be more of a bullish type entry if you get a burst down to here you can consider long entries to the s p 500 or various indices uh, various stocks and then up here you'd probably want to start taking profits if we get a big breath move up to there now um that could be a short-term profit taking just keep in mind because we can go above that and get these big bursts right here that really start heading us higher too um, from a BPSPX standpoint, that negative divergence has played out. So you can see that the BPSPX, the RSI, has dropped now below 50. It's still not oversold by any means, so it does suggest that we could head lower, um, but it has not been confirmed at this particular point in time. Um, overall, though, it's at 78, which means 78% of the stocks are still on buy, signal, buy signals based off of point and figure charts for the S&P 500, so still technically a, a bullish reading. Uh, here is the 30 minute time frame. You can see here we gap down through that 41650, 417 zone of support. And, you know, go figure, right? The aftermarket session, we can't get through it here. So we gap down through it after, after hours. Um, we came back up, retested, and headed down. And now we just get this vertical move back up to the upside. This looks very similar to what happened right here. You know, right at 412 on uh, April 23rd. Okay, we came down. It was so scary. Ah, and then it just, in you know an hour and a half, it goes straight back up. So potentially, um, you know, we go back and test those levels. We'll keep an eye on that. 417 is that area of resistance now. It was support. Now it can be resistance. So perhaps we go back and then head lower. So that's always a possibility. Be mindful of that. And we have this gap up here. So also be mindful that there's um, some resistance kind of in this this pocket, this gap right here. All right, let's move on to IWM. Not much to call out here. Gap down through a main area of support that was previously resistance to as well. And I just want to call, there's a possibility right here of a bear flag forming. We'll move on. Uh, the cues on the daily time frame did crack through this box and then headed lower to almost touch the 50 day moving average with a gap above us. So uh, be careful here with that because this could be the start of a stronger move to the downside. Uh, volume on this down day was very significant relative to this previous consolidation. And also the move up here in April, um, not the entire move, but pretty much the entire move, um, you can see that the volume selling is significantly more than the volume that got us up here. So a little bit of a cause for concern. We can see here closer on the 30 minute time frame, we could potentially be having a bear flag. So perhaps we come back in up to 334, that can now act as an area of resistance. Perhaps we even fill the gap and then we potentially break down lower. Uh, that is a very strong possibility. Uh, I can't guarantee that that will happen and we don't just recover this and head up higher, which is also a strong possibility. But this was a pretty significant channel break right here. So let's see if it holds weight. And if it does hold weight, um, 
we back test and then potentially fill. I mean, heck, we can even gap down tomorrow too as well. Uh, so just be mindful of that. When I look at the, uh, the BP and the X chart, here's something YS to, you might wanna consider looking for long setups is because the BP and the X is now moving very quickly into oversold territory. Uh, and typically when we get that, sometimes we can get divergences and you can see when we get oversold, we can have sometimes some rallies take place. Now it could be oversold for a long period of time, so just be aware of that, but we are moving into that area where it might be it might be worth looking for some hedge long positions. Um, and another point to that is the semiconductors we talked about in yesterday's market brief. Today, we did have that crackdown lower. I called out when it was going to the 100 day moving average, 100 day moving average did hold as a level of support. And now I'm bringing back this chart because we charted this out a while ago. This, and when it cracked through this area of resistance, it moved up higher. And then I said, okay, well maybe perhaps it'd be a good area to entry here. And you can see today's candle, perfect hammer candle and it bounced right within this um, entry zone. So uh, it's something to something to watch out for. So maybe this is potentially the move to the downside and now we get that bounce. That candle right there does suggest that we can get a, a bounce now. Um, and it is overextended. It's below the daily Bollinger Band trading outside of it. Um, it is clearly disconnected from the 5 EMA. So perhaps we get a dead cat bounce here. Um, we'll continue to just see how that uh, monitor, or monitor that, see how that plays out. Here's the DIA, uh, the Dow Jones. This is just an industrial ETF. We have resistance at 342 to 342.50. We have support at 337. You can see today's price action. We had the gap down, came back up, fell back down, and then just completely vertical of V. And you could see that this has been taking place here. It's just absolutely insane market action. So I'd just say, let's consider Let's continue to watch this channel because it seems to be really relevant. If we get 337, um, we could have a stronger crack below that. If we get above, hey, that can be very well, just, just another leg to the upside in all of this. All right, everybody, that's all I got for you on today's daily stock market brief. Just to really recap and give you my thoughts. Look, you got to be very careful in this environment. To be quite honest, right now, it looks like this, today should have been, you should have took an action today to potentially find hedge longs um, in the sectors that were performing. For me personally, I was looking at XLB and XLI and got into some of those and they're performing decently. But also you got to be bullish and you got to be bullishly cautious in this environment. Okay. Um, one, the trend is your friend until it's the end, right? So from a daily perspective, everything does look good. We The bearish thing that took place today is that we cracked through a pretty key level um, of some support in certain aspects. Still within the S&P 500, we're still within this channel. I think I think that um, you should be paying very close attention if we start cracking through this channel or if the NDX continues to sell off here. Um, like I said, be bullish, but you gotta be cautious while you're a bull and be very particular with what you're setting up. Pick stock that you know will benefit that are have been performing strong from a relative standpoint and make sure that you focus on your risk first that's all i got for you on today's market brief see you later